Good morning and welcome to worship with the community of Westside Unitarian Universalist Church, where compassion leads us to work for justice and equality. I'm glad you are joining our virtual service today. And I hope this gathering will renew your sense of community and connection and nourish your heart, mind, and spirit. My name is Sherry Woodbury, and I'm the minister here at Westside. I want to thank our technology helpers today, including Spencer Maxwell, our worship producer, as well as Amy Stubbs and Janelle Weaver, plus Westside singers and Charlie Ford for behind the scenes music mixing. And of course, Westside's musical muse, our pianist, Yuki Kumamoto. Whether you come as a spiritual seeker, an atheist, or a theist, whether you find inspiration in the great books or the great outdoors or great conversations, all are welcome in our inclusive congregation. If you are so moved, you can try out the chat feature on Zoom by typing in some words of welcome to both members and visitors who are joining us this morning. And on behalf of our community, I say to all as well, welcome. Today's order of service uh, is available as a, a PDF that will be uh, popped into the chat uh, here and there so you can grab it. Uh, it was also in the forward and the email blast this morning with links for this morning's service. So you can open that if you would like to have it in front of you. Please do continue to watch your inbox website, and our Facebook page for updates on how our groups are meeting and how you can uh, plug into different activities with Westside. You can also stick around after our service ends today if you would like to join us for a virtual coffee hour. We'll be putting people into breakout groups of about four people so you can connect with one another and maybe even uh, discuss uh, some of the questions related to today's service. First, I invite you to consider what will help you be present for this worship service. Please make yourself comfortable wherever you are this morning and continue to do so throughout the service. Now let us worship together as we listen to this morning's prelude. share with you opening words from Amy Zucker Morgan as we light our chalice and feel free to join in lighting your own chalice if you have one and I believe we're going to see uh, West Side's uh, chalice this morning. Within the heart of the flower, the within the heart of the community, a fire that warms and dances Within the heart of each of us, a spark of the spirit of life. Holy, holy, holy. Our chalice song this morning is number 397, Morning Has Come, and you can join in as, as it is played uh, with some of the voices of our choir. Thank you all for bearing with us. Uh, I think that means you didn't hear the chalice song either. I wasn't sure if that was just me. Um, well, let's see. I'd like to sing it with you, but I realize you don't have the words in front of you either. 397. Let me see if I can hold it up to the camera. 
Mm. We're doing this one. Morning has come, night is away. Rise with the sun and welcome the day. Oh, let's do that again with the words in the uh, in the chat. Morning has come, night is away. Rise with the sun and welcome the day. I can imagine you all sounding lovely in your homes with your coffee cups and your your pets or your family with you there. We're trying a, a new worship producer for the first time, I think, since we started online worship, um, passing that responsibility on from a staff member to include some volunteers. And it looks like we've had a little hiccup with uh, probably internet uh, connection. So let's see. I wonder, uh, Amy, if you can paste the affirmation in the chat and we can go ahead and do it that way. There it is. Okay. I invite you to join me in the affirmation that you'll see there in the chat. And I know many of us know it by heart. Love is the doctrine of this church. The quest of truth is its sacraments and service is its prayer. To dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge and freedom, to serve others in community, to the end that all souls shall grow into harmony with creation. Thus do we covenant with one another. And if you'll join in singing our opening hymn, it's a number eight, Mother Spirit, Father Spirit. And this piece was written by Norbert Chopik, a Czech Unitarian you'll hear more about as we continue the service. I believe we'll hear our West Side singers on, on this one. Thank you, singers. Our Time for All Ages will pre be presented today by Caroline Nixon. Let's hear what she has to share about our special Sunday service today. Some churches have towers with bells that ring out the hours. Some churches have organs whose mighty sound spills out into the streets. Some have handsome doors of carved wood or colorful stained glass windows. 
that in 1923, in Prague, Czechoslovakia, there was a plain church that had none of these. The church just had four walls, a ceiling, and a floor. The church had a door, a few windows, and some wooden chairs. But the church had something else. It had people. They came every Sunday, and they were the most important part of the church. Because without people, a church is just a building. The minister of this church was Norbert Chapek. He had been the minister for two years. Every Sunday, the congregation listened to Reverend Chapek's sermon. They sat quietly in their wooden chairs. Afterward, they talked to one another a little bit, and then they went home. That was all. No music, no candles, no food, not even coffee or donuts. Reverend Chapek wanted more. He wrote some songs, and the people sang them. But mostly, the church went on as before. Then spring arrived, and Norbert Chapek went out for a stroll. The rains had come and gone, the birds were singing, and flowers bloomed everywhere the Reverend looked. In the middle of all that beauty, he got an idea. That Sunday, Reverend Chapek asked all the people of the church to bring a flower the next week, a budding branch or even a twig. Each person should bring one, he said. What kind, they asked. You choose, he said. What color, they asked. Each of you choose what you like. The next Sunday was the first day of summer and people came to church with flowers of all kinds. There were yellow daisies and purple roses. There were white lilies and blue asters, dark blue pansies and long branches with pale green leaves, pink and purple, orange and gold, all these colors and more. The flowers spilled over, filling all the vases that they could find. We are like these flowers, he said. Different colors, different ages, different sizes. We are different in so many ways, but each of us is beautiful and important. Important in our own way, like these flowers. Reverend Chapik asked each of them to take a flower home, choosing a different flower from the one they brought. And they did. Reverend Chapik called this event the Flower Festival. Today, many Unitarian Universalist churches call it the Flower Communion and celebrate it every spring. Thank you, Caroline, for sharing that story of the Flower Communion. For joyous and concerns, we have uh, several submitted via email or the new web form on the care and support page of Westside's website, which you can also use now to share a joy or concern for Sunday service. You can also post items in the comments right now if you have a joy or concern that you would like to share with all today. Just remember that because we are live streaming and will post the recording, things shared today could be heard by many. As we share our joys with others, those joys are multiplied. And as we share our concerns, our community can offer its care, which I know this caring community is eager to do. We have a concern from Glenda Hood, who writes, my sister Anne had surgery in Houston on Wednesday. The surgery and her initial surgery have been difficult thoughts for her. Our healing thoughts and good wishes to Glenda and her sister Anne and her other sister that they're, I think they're both with now in Houston. From Brenda McKeon, today is my birthday. Happy birthday, Brenda. And tomorrow is Jean and my 41st anniversary. Happy anniversary to both of you. Gwen Genius shares the joy of receiving artwork from little Andre Ireland. He's a prolific artist in our congregation. Looked like uh, finger paintings, which uh, Gwen has finally posted in her home. And a joy from Amy Stubbs. Congratulations to Matt Partiter Villarreal for becoming a candidate for ministry with the UUA. Go Matt, that's very exciting. We're all proud of you. 
We also have a joy from Diane Jones. Diane says, I want to thank my West Side family for the beautiful cards, text, emails, and so on that have been sent since my dad's death due to pancreatic cancer on April 29th. I felt the warmth of your virtual hugs, and I'm so proud to be part of this fine community. Thank you for sharing those with us. Let us also call into our circle of care this morning, all for whom we may be uh, concerned. And please feel to write any additional names in the chat and I will simply call their names. On this fine spring morning at the end of May, we call into our circle of care, Diane and her family on the loss of her father and Matt Pargeter Villarreal with joy at this big milestone he has crossed. We call into our circle Gwen and little Andre and Brenda and Jean and Glenda and her sisters, especially Anne. We call into our circle of care our friend Red Von Fallis. And yes, Cindy, we speak the name of Floyd George a black man needlessly killed by police in Minneapolis in recent days, and all the people and communities who grieve and rage and seek change as we grapple with the unfinished work of our country to provide liberty and justice for all. Yes, Black Lives Matter, and we speak the name of Floyd George. And we speak the name also of Sue Spell being elected Vice President of Texas Stonewall Democratic Caucus starting July. Hooray, Sue. And any other names that we wish to call into our circle of care. We keep these and many others in our hearts, even if their names be not spoken today. Sharing draws our community closer together. Please know that the Pastoral Care Associates of the Church, as well as your minister, are available to support you with deep listening. We also have an in-reach fund that is administered by the Pastoral Care Team that is available specifically to support members and friends who may be going through a time of short-term financial need. When you want to connect, you can reach out directly to anyone on the Pastoral Care Team or you can send an email to pastoralcare at westsideuu.org or call the church and you'll be connected. We are here for you. This morning's centering song is number 352, Find a Stillness. This is another song that ties us to an international community of Unitarians. I invite you to sing with me if you're so moved and I'll simply lead it a cappella. And I believe we'll have the words on the screen here of number 352, find a stillness. Find a stillness, hold a stillness, let the stillness carry me. Find the silence, hold the silence, let the silence carry me. In the spirit, by the spirit, with the spirit giving power, I will find true harmony. Seek the essence, hold the essence, let the essence carry me. Let me flower, help me flower, watch me flower, carry me. In the spirit, by the spirit, with the spirit giving power, I will find true harmony. Ah. 
on the wings of this music, I invite you to join me in a time of centering. Each week here at Westside, we open our hearts to those in our community who know both joys and challenges and to all suffering beings. I will offer an introduction before we move into a time for silent introspection. You may wish, may wish to position yourself comfortably and let your eyes rest, or perhaps you prefer to gaze upon this beautiful, one of these beautiful flowers. First, I share with you words of William B. Rice. This is adapted from a Flower Sunday in 1969 in another UU church. It was another time of national crisis and turbulence. After this prayer, I will strike the bell and in the silence, you may wish to again meditate on the flower on the screen or close your eyes to pray or simply sit in silent companionship with our West Side community. And then I will end the silence with the bell again. First, this prayer from William B. Rice written decades ago, but speaking to the strife of our own day. On a day such as this, may a great change come upon us. The sounds we have been hearing have been discordant. The sights we have been seeing, some have been violent. The words we have been reading, some have been hateful. All this has been wearying discouraging. In our hearts we had a dream of love and in our minds we had a pattern of community, but this has been a sorry season of discontent, most difficult for visions. Today is a new day, truly an hour for hope and joy and gladness. Let us be thankful for the persistence of flowers and open ourselves to their long wisdom. Often they grow in spite of terrible winters and miserable summers. Strange beauty greets us in unexpected places, as if there is a particular grace that is stronger than our care difference. But when we tend our gardens with love and care, the reward can be greater than the effort. It is most wise to combine flowers and children in a day of celebration, for flowers and children ever speak to us of wonders and glories yet to be, of hopes fulfilled if we tend our gardens and our homes and our communities with patience and wisdom and love. Let us be silent together. Beautiful pink uh, roses there, wild roses there, by the way, come from along the side of the church. It's a picture I took about a month ago. West Side has a long tradition of reaching out to the wider community and generosity. 
You'll find guidance in the order of service, the chat, and then the afterword early this week about three different causes to support and how you can give. In addition to giving online through our donation webpage or mailing a check to the church, you can now use the Give Plus app available through Google Play Store or the Apple Play Store for use on smartphones. And I'm told it's a very convenient way to give once you've downloaded that app. Please know that payments on your pledge to support the church itself are needed just as much as ever. And I understand that even as loose plate offerings have dropped off dramatically since we made the switch to virtual church, pledge contributions have been pretty steady. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for supporting the mission of Westside. We also have provided information about supporting Westside's inReach fund, which offers short-term financial support to members in times of need and about directly supporting community organizations like our partner, South Central Alliance of Churches. Again, links and details for these giving options are provided in the order of service. I think you'll see them come up in the chat here in a moment, and they will be included in the afterward email blast early next week as well. To give you some time to make a gift or to complete your pledge right now, uh, your pledge gift right now as you're able, we'll hear another gift of music from our talented staff pianist, Yuki Kumamoto. Thank you as always, Yuki, for the beautiful music and thanks to all of you who are putting into practice here at Westside the spiritual virtue of generosity. Our giving helps to ensure that our mission continues and connects us to the wider web of community and those who may not be as fortunate as many of us. As you may know, we're celebrating the flower ceremony today. We join with Unitarian and Unitarian Universalist congregations around the world in celebrating a flower communion service. The ceremony was introduced for the first time in 1923 by the founder of the Czech Unitarians, Norbert Čapek. It is typically celebrated on the last Sunday in May or another Sunday in late spring or early summer. I adapt materials today from my colleague, Lara Fuchs, as well as Westside's own Debbie Rake, who led the first flower ceremony in this congregation, as I understand it, in 2012. At his Unitarian church in Prague, Norbert Chopik felt the need for some symbolic ritual that would bind people more closely together. The format had to be one that would not alienate any who had forsaken other religious traditions. The traditional Christian communion service with bread and wine was unacceptable to the members of his congregation because of their strong reaction against the Catholic faith that so many of them had left when they had the opportunity to do so. So as we heard in the Time for All Ages, Chapik turned to the native beauty of the countryside for elements of a communion which would be genuine to his congregation. The result was a simple service in which members of the church each brought a flower they found beautiful 
and all the flowers were combined into a bouquet. Dr. Chapik preached on the symbolism, saying, the significance of the flower communion is that as no two flowers are alike, so no two people are alike, yet each has a contribution to make. Together, the different flowers form a beautiful bouquet. Our common bouquet would not be the same without the unique addition of each individual flower. And thus it is with our church community. It would not be the same without each and every one of us. Thus, this service is a statement of our community. Then as the service concluded, each person would select a flower different from the one they brought to take home with them, reflecting how we share our different gifts with each other to the enrichment of all. The simple service was such a success that it was held yearly just before the summer recess of the church. It was introduced to the United States in 1940 by Dr. Chapik's wife, Maya V. Chapik. The Czech-born Maya had met Norbert Chapik in New York City while he was studying for his PhD, and it was at her urging that Norbert left the Baptist ministry and turned to Unitarianism. The Chapiks returned to Czechoslovakia in 1921 and established the Dynamic Liberal Church in Prague. Maya Chapik was the first woman in Europe ordained in the Unitarian tradition in 1926 and served as co-minister with Norbert Chapik. It was during her tour of the United States that Maya introduced the Flower Communion, which had been developed in the Prague Church at the Unitarian Church in Cambridge, Massachusetts. <coughs> Unfortunately, Maya was unable to return to Prague due to the outbreak of World War II. And it was not until the war was over that Norbert Topek's death in a Nazi concentration camp was revealed. From this beginning, the flower service has spread to many of our Unitarian Universalist congregations and has been adapted along the way. When the Nazis took control of Prague in 1940, they found Dr. Chapik's gospel of the inherent worth and beauty of every human person to be, as Nazi court records show, quote, too dangerous to the Reich for him to be allowed to live. Dr. Chapik was sent to Dachau, where he was killed the next year during what was labeled a Nazi medical experiment. This gentle man suffered a cruel death, but his message of human hope and decency lives on through his flower communion or flower ceremony, which is widely celebrated today. It is a noble and meaning-filled ritual we are recreating in our own unique way this year. This service includes original prayers of Dr. Chapik to help us remember the principles and dreams for which he died the freedoms and the liberal faith for which the Reverend Maya Chapik continued to work for the rest of her life. Let us hear first an adaptation of Dr. Chapik's prayer given at the first flower ceremony. In the name of Providence, Chapik prayed, which implants in the seed the future of the tree and in our hearts the longing for people to live in harmony. And the name of the highest, and whom we move, and who makes the parent or sibling what they are. And the name of sages and great religious leaders, who sacrifice their lives to hasten the coming of the age of mutual respect. Let us renew our resolution, sincerely to be real siblings and cousins, regardless of any kind of bar which estranges us from each other. In this holy resolution, may we be strengthened, knowing that we are God's family, that one spirit, the spirit of love, unites us, and endeavor for a more perfect and more joyful life. Amen. 
I share with you now a visual bouquet of Westside members who offered their own messages of love and hope with you, with plants or flowers at hand. The music that will play in the background is our opening hymn, which again, Norbert Topic wrote. So let me screen share this with you. Thank you to all who sent in pictures for the project. I want to share with you also a collage I made of them all together. I'd like to share a collage like this with the congregation as a file that you can download and make a screensaver on your computer or device or print and post on your fridge. If you didn't participate in this project already, but you would like to, you can still send your picture. You can uh, send it to minister at westsideuu.org by next Saturday, June 6th. Just include your smiling face, a flower or other plant, and any words of hope or wisdom that you wish to share. Uh, and if anyone who did already send in a picture doesn't want to be included in the collage available for download, just let me know. We will use a password protected file like we do for the church directory to distribute the collage screensaver. So you can look for the link for that to come out later in June. Meanwhile, over this bouquet of beautiful people and flowers and heartfelt messages, I share with you Norbert Chopik's original consecration of flowers. Feel free to bow your head or view the picture as you hear the consecration of the flowers. Infinite spirit of life, Chapik prayed. We ask thy blessing on these thy messengers of fellowship and brotherly love. May they remind us amid diversities of knowledge and of gifts to be one in desire and affection and devotion to thy holy will. May they also remind us of the value of comradeship, of doing and sharing alike. May we cherish friendship as one of thy most precious gifts. May we not let awareness of another's talents discourage us or sully our relationship, but may we realize that whatever we can do, great or small, the efforts of all of us are needed to do thy work in this world. 
Amen. And I'd like to share one last prayer with you. You can see the images here of the Chapics. Chapic wrote this uh, last prayer shortly before his death at the hands of the Nazis. It is worthwhile to live and fight courageously for sacred ideals, Chapic wrote. Oh, blow ye evil winds into my body's fire. My soul, you'll never unravel. <clears throat> Even though disappointed a thousand times or fallen in the fight and everything would worthless seem, I have lived amidst eternity. Be grateful, my soul. My life was worth living. He who was pressed from all sides but remained victorious in spirit is welcomed into the choir of heroes. He who overcame the fetters giving wing to the mind is entering into the golden age of the victorious. May we too know that our lives are worth living. May we be victorious in spirit and fight courageously for our sacred ideals and the ways that our time calls us to do. That all the people, all the colors may mix together in beauty and love as a lush field of wildflowers or a bouquet of the most fragrant blooms. So may it be, amen. I invite you to join me in singing our closing hymn, <clears throat> number 305, De Coloras. You can watch the screen for the words we'll sing today. We've got the three English verses, and then we'll finish with the Spanish verse. And I'm going to do this one with a piano file from my phone. So I hope I get the balance well for you. Here we go, de coloras. Next slide, please. All right, let's see how our Spanish is.
As we have heard, Norbert Chopik's home and his church were overrun by German soldiers in the years of World War II. He gave his life defying their cruel occupation. But before he died, he influenced thousands of people with the beauty of his words and ideals, including the flower ceremony that he originated and that his wife and co-minister Maya Chopik helped spread throughout our country. The flower festival symbolizes the light and color and fragrance of many creeds, many cultures, and many races joining together in a bright living bouquet. The Nazis are now gone, but the flower ceremony continues to be celebrated in this congregation and hundreds of others around the world. It is a testament to the power of love to withstand hate and to the vision of a tolerant faith, which sweeps the world, not by persecution or threats of violence, but by drawing people to its principles with the sweet scent of peace and freedom. May we be worthy inheritors of this tradition. And may we continue to bring to flowering in our own lives the beautiful ideals that the Chopics championed in their lives. May it be so. Amen. If you have a chalice at home, you may extinguish it now. And please join in the congregational closing words which you'll see on the screen. Let us go in peace, believe in peace, and create peace in our lives and in the world. May it be so. If you'd like to participate in our virtual coffee hour, please stay on the call and you'll be placed into a breakout room with several other people. Please do be mindful of our congregational covenant. Be sure to welcome newcomers and give everyone an equal chance to participate in the conversation. Once everyone is in groups, we'll post some discussion starter questions uh, in the chat or through the broadcast for you. And the coffee hour will continue until about 1140 when the call will end. As always, we welcome your feedback about our time together. Thanks again to all who helped uh, produce this service. And it's wonderful to be with all of you and worship. Go in peace. <laughs>